Hey guys, Nishquick here, and welcome back to the EXP Podcast. It has been a very long time since I recorded an episode. I think this is the second episode of this year because I've been doing a lot of other video-related stuff, but I am back with a special guest and a fellow Metaphor Refantasio fan. Today I have my buddy Septic from the channel JVGM. You want to introduce yourself and your channel and what you're up to and all that stuff? Yo, what's going on, everyone? Septic here. Um, no, man, everything's been good here. Um, you know, just doing my thing, working, uh, working on videos too. Uh, I got a video that's almost done, pretty much. But yeah, everything's been pretty much good on my end. <laughs> yeah, exciting. I um, I remember when we got more hype news for Metaphor, especially like during the Game Awards and like leading up to this year. In my head. I was thinking like, hey, I'm gonna do a podcast on this eventually, but like, who should I get on? Because we'll talk about this eventually, but like, the hype is now like pretty big. Now a lot more people know about it, but like, back during June when this was revealed at the Xbox show and then Game Awards and stuff, I feel like <laughs> during my, on my Twitter timeline, we were like the only two mm -hmm. people talking about this game. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, I think, I think Septic is a good person to have on for a chat about this but yeah we'll be talking about the showcase and just why we're hyped for the game so yeah mm -hmm. i guess like we can take it away like what what interests you the most because like we're big atlas fans we played like persona 5 persona 4 persona 3 we recently played reload like what what excites you the most about this game as an atlas fan and a persona fan damn that's a that's a good question so obviously i gotta say like graphics beautiful like yeah. 10 out of 10 like i think the the visuals of the game are like absolutely phenomenal but i think i have to go with the best thing about it is the fact that it's kind of like a combination of both persona and smt mm -hmm. in a sense you get what i mean yeah. like the battle system um where it's pretty similar to uh the smt games but like it also like carries over elements of persona with its integrations of like social links uh, and all that stuff well I already forgot what they called it here, but yeah, like yeah. basically their version of social links and everything. But I think that's what definitely interests me the most. How like they're trying to combine like two things and everything and mm -hmm. putting them together. It's um, it's very gritty in the sense that it is doing a lot of um, kind of uh, mature themes like SMT. Even though like it, what I found, I wouldn't say this kind of disappointed me, but when I found out this that this wasn't rated M, I was a little disappointed. I was like, ah, oh, they're not going to go like full dark and like mature themes and all that. But from mm -hmm, the yeah. trailers, it still looks like it's going to have like a really heavy story. Maybe not exactly like a SMT5 or SMT Nocturne or anything like that, but it's going to have a little bit of those vibes because a lot of the people who are working on this game were like heavy, heavily involved in Nocturne and like some older SMT games. So I'm excited to see mm -hmm. how that's going to play into it. For me, I love fantasy games. Like fantasy is my aesthetic. Like it, whether Agreed, it's Jimmy. like Final Fantasy aesthetic or if it's like Kingdom Hearts or Xenoblade, which is a mix of sci-fi and fantasy. This is like yeah. full Agreed. on 100% fantasy, high fantasy. And Persona like had fantastical elements, but it was mostly like realistic people going into the supernatural. Very kind of different Agreed, yeah. take. I, yeah, because I like, it's only like special in like the one area compared to like the, the rest yeah. of the world. The rest of the world just it's just a regular city and everything yeah exactly like you have the dungeons and then or like you have the special world whether like it's like um the dark hour in persona 3 or the tv world in persona 4 or the metaverse in persona mm -hmm. 5 but like in this it's like a full-on fantasy setting and it's nothing like atlas has done before like maybe the closest thing is like etrian odyssey or like an smt yeah. game but the aesthetic and the tone and the vibe is something i really really love and that's that's what's that's what really excites me about no, this. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, I'm like the same way. Like it's 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 beautiful. Like I, I, I just I'm just loving everything I see. And even then, like you mentioned, they they are doing something weird again. Like you said, it is fantasy. At least from what like the beginning part of that trailer showed, like when we get into it, right? It's like it looked like when you like pick your protagonist's name and everything yeah. like that, it showed like a whole city. I'm not too sure if that's supposed to be like, you know, this this is a work of fiction, some similar, all that stuff, I'm not too sure. But like they showed a real city, so yeah. I'm not too sure that's gonna be play a some like an effect in like the story later on. But 
Uh, that is something I did want to point out. How there was like a, like an actual like modern day city shown off in the beginning of the. the we'll talk about that a little bit more, but that that is a really good observation, and it's something I've noticed as well in both mm -hmm. this showcase and this new trailer, as well as the Game Awards trailer. There is something mm -hmm. like hinting at that, and even the first trailer. The first trailer was interesting because the first trailer had just a lot of cuts with a lot of things going on and it was just a little tough to follow but then if you like read the dialogue at the bottom because it's it's dubbed in japanese if you read the translation at the bottom you get some like really cool mm -hmm. revelations about like the fantasy reality stuff but yeah we'll uh, talk about that in a bit but yeah um, that, that's something that's right you did mention it because i did hear that in the trailer itself where they're mentioning fantasy reality a little bit so it's yeah. something I definitely want to keep my eye on and everything. Yeah, cool stuff there. Um, we're both huge fans of Persona 5, so do you think... Like, <laughs> we talked about this once, like, earlier this year, because I, I don't remember what it was, like, concerning, but we're like, oh, um, people shouldn't be sleeping on this game. This might be on the level of Persona 5, but, like, do you think it's going to be on that level? Because Persona 5, like, was a... I wouldn't say it's a breakthrough for JRPGs, but it like it, it was huge. Like you don't see JRPGs usually score yeah. that high in Metacritic and review scores and all that. It got like a huge following and everything. Yeah. Like it brought Persona to like a whole different series. Like them basically broke it down. And Persona Three kind of like broke it out of that small niche, mm -hmm. and then Persona Four like elevated it to higher places. We started seeing more people talk about it. Persona Five was just breaking out of that box. Yeah, <laughs> it's the mainstream. Like everyone. Now. Yeah, everyone knew what Persona was. Like, I mean, like when Joker was announced for Smash Brothers, how the people who never played the games but knew about the character went crazy. They were like, "Wait, I know that guy." Yeah, <laughs> it was so big that like, they had that reveal at the Game Awards, which is like the place for like these things. So that was really cool. Yeah, but it, had to, it was because of Smash as well. Like, those were like anything, yeah. any Smash type reveal. They were like, "We need it." <laughs> yeah, the big but, ones they did at the Game Awards. Like, I remember Joker and Sephiroth were at the Game Awards. They're like, "These are the yeah. big, big guns. We gotta have them here." Yeah. yeah, two two big two two big characters. Steve would have been funny if it was announced. Uh, in, uh, dude, imagine in, uh, if Sora game was at the Game Awards. <laughs> Sora at the Game Awards. That would have been cool. That would have broken the internet. I mean, but Sora I already did why break Nintendo. The internet, yeah, he did do break the. And I mean, yeah, no, you're right. You're right. He did break the internet a little bit. Dude, uh, but um, no, but Steve broke Twitter literally. <laughs> Steve, I remember back then, like I saw it, and then I couldn't refresh Twitter. Twitter, like it literally, like couldn't do anything. Yeah, that, that, those are some great times and everything. But yeah, like Metaphor, Metaphor did get a trailer in um in the Game Awards if I remember last time, right? Like yes. it was, but it was like it was like a small trailer. I think it was like before the show and, and everything as well. It which was is nice. Yeah, Pre-show trailer and they hyped it up a little bit. It was a pretty cool trailer because we got to hear the dub, the English dub for the first time. We got to see the action combat for the first time. That yeah. was huge. And then Which we just I'm actually excited yeah. for the dub because I want to know who's actually voicing who and everything in that dub because I, I was watching that when I was watching the trade there was I swear I'm not too sure if I was the only one that heard this but I swear I heard someone that sounded like Rex but not Xenoblade 3 Rex I'm talking Xenoblade 2 yeah. Rex <laughs> no like, I, I, I it was think so one too. moment yeah um, I think there's going to be a lot of character uh, voice actors we recognize from the Xenoblade games and specifically mm -hmm. Final Fantasy 16, because I don't know if you played 16, but 16 had a lot of British voice actors and a lot of British talent. Yeah. British and like just a lot of people from Europe, that area. And like, of course, yeah. Xenoblade has like British, Scottish, Irish, Welsh, Australian, yeah. especially two, oh, nice. two, all the Titans have like different dialects and accents and all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, like so far, like I would say like the only ones for FF16 that I know was that Ben Starr, obviously, mm -hmm. like, Ben Starr is a legend. Um, and the other one being, obviously, Malice's voice actor. Yeah, that I know that David he's in the Menken. game and everything. Mm -hmm. But other than that, like, that's that's pretty much all I know so far, because I haven't played the game yet. But I know that those two are in the game. That's, yeah. that's one thing I do know. Funnily enough, Harry McIntyre has, like, a small role in there. I don't remember who he plays, but Harry McIntyre is a Noah hey. from Xenoblade 3. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, like that's that's cool though. That I'm, I'm happy to see that Harry is in it somewhat, yeah. somewhat, you know. So in some way, it's it's small but better than nothing. It's like how Adam Howden was a random character said, "I'm really feeling it in a Lego Star Wars game." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, but um, I, cool, though. I I think back to like metaphors relevant. Oh, not relevance, but like 
its um, critical acclaim and popularity. I don't think it's going to break out as much as Persona 5 because Persona 5 was the fifth game in its established IP. But like, I, I, I don't want to like say, oh, it's gonna be like the best rated game of the year. It's gonna be so good. But like, I think it is going to surprise people with how high quality of a game this is because Atlas has been hyping this up for a very long time. Like, ever since before even Persona 5 released, they've been hyping it up. And what's interesting is I thought it's been in development since then, but no, actually, like, the, like, our resident leaker Midori and, um, even now, um... Great Midori? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> she's back now, so it, it's all good, yeah. she's back. But, uh, even Katsura Hashino himself has said that they didn't start actually legitimately developing this game until 2019. Which is interesting. So, I mean, it's still like a long development cycle, but I'm really excited to see mm -hmm. the fruits of their labor. And especially with this new IP, I think they're pulling yeah. out all their big guns. And they're even saying, like, this is the culmination of all the work that we've done at Atlas, and we want to, like, make this the best game it can be. So, I'm very hyped for that. Yeah, no, same here. And it's like, it's crazy to think about that because you said it worked and now started until like 2019. And I could have sworn. That like back in like 2016 or 2017 around the time the persona 5 was even being like developed and everything or like it just came out and people are like experiencing it the persona 5 hype and everything i swear i remember them showing off like pictures of like something they were working on it was i think the, the red-haired girl yeah yeah, yeah it was the project Greek yeah. fantasy so they had they had something there but i think that's all they had just concept mm -hmm. art just being thrown there i don't know but so I thought they were already working on it since then. But no, the fact that you mentioned 2019 that they've been working on that that's when they started working on it. It's crazy. They, they, they had only just the concept art just done. Do you uh, do you remember there was this one trailer of this like live action guy, like a British, like an old British man in a full suit of mm -hmm. armor, like a full plated iron suit of armor sits down and he gets like this bag of like fried chicken and he eats it. And that's the, no. that's the trailer. That's literally the trailer. That was the trailer. And then it ends with no. Project Re Fantasy in development. <laughs> what? I'm not kidding. I'll, no, I'll send you that later. This, it's hilarious. This is, the, this, is, this is the first time I even hear something like that. Like yeah. what? Because <laughs> when I like, no, that's crazy. When I made my first metaphor video, a few, like last year, I went back and like looked at all the like hype and lead up trailers leading up to like the official reveal of. Metaphor Re Fantasio, but like I was looking at all the Project Re Fantasy trailers, and one of them was like that guy eating the fried chicken, and I'm like, dude, I hope this guy makes an appearance in the game as like an Easter egg. They literally, yeah, <laughs> that would be funny, funny though. That actually, but no, I didn't even know that. I need to watch that now that you yeah. mentioned that. Yeah. But I, would, I guess we'll do that later and everything. But yeah, but yeah, but, um, no, like we can um, just general thoughts from you. What did you think of? Um, Monday's showcase and trailer, like all the new stuff we got. Oh, I thought it was fantastic. Like to basically say, like I was saying it early to you, like mm -hmm. before we started recording, like I'm impressed by how little they showed of the game story. I, I'm I'm a big fan of that. I like that. I like it when they just kind of give us just the premise of what was displayed, and then you just go straight into all the details, the gameplay, just the other activities you're doing, the world. But overall, from what they showed. I really, really liked it. I thought that what they showed was fantastic. I think it was just enough to kind of like, you know, it's like basically like a plate. It's just enough. Like you're not super full, but it's enough to be like, yeah, I'm filled up for yeah. a, a while and everything. Like this, this to me is gonna fill me up for a little bit until probably maybe summer games fest sometime yeah. around July. I think we'll August, get another trailer around like then. Yeah. Exactly. And what's interesting is um, this felt like they're like metaphor direct like you know how xenoblade 3 had its direct like a month before the game came out this is what mm -hmm, that yeah. felt like and i was like dude they're doing this like earlier on like what's the marketing cycle gonna be for the rest of it so yeah that's exciting for me i i loved what we saw but um like you said uh with them not showing a lot if you remember in the showcase there's a lot of things that hashino shows off and he's like oh um there's more to this but we'll show you some time later we'll show you another time and i'm like oh yeah they, at, at first 
I was I wasn't upset by that, but I was like, oh my god, I like you're you're showing us like really like simple basic things. I want to see more. I want to see like yeah. more of what you do with this. But I'm it's glad like he's teasing they, us, you know. Him. Yeah, exactly. I I'm kind of like in hindsight, especially after I was editing my video on the showcase. In hindsight, I'm glad they showed us little stuff because uh, for a lot of other people who weren't as hyped about this game during like uh microsoft the the microsoft showcase at e3 and then uh, the game awards mm -hmm. their big like mind-blowing thing was like oh my god we're seeing this game in action it looks good it looks good that like how you're moving around how the game is playing and all that and i was like yeah mm -hmm. in my mind i was like i feel like i've seen a lot of this and like come to a lot of these conclusions from the past information and the past trailers but it was still cool to see it in action and especially like, the story stuff i'm glad he like kept that at a minimum i think with the teases of the gameplay stuff especially the stuff he does in the towns and the stuff he does in the gauntlet runners and the combat stuff mm -hmm. the teases that we got and he was like oh there's more to this i'm like if this is the bare minimum and if we're getting more on top yeah. of that that's insane i think so um, that's that's what, that's what i'm that's what i'm super excited for like what he keeps on saying like he sees He's on, he kept on saying, like he said, we'll show you more later, you know, or hiding certain things. And I'm be real with you. Um, this plot, I guess when we get to that, right? Like, mm -hmm. I feel like he's hiding something for this plot. It, it's not just a simple, like, oh, the king died. Um, and they're doing like a whole thing to get the new king and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And you're basically gathering these followers. Like, there's no doubt about there's there's something more to the story that's going to be there's coming gonna up. There's going to be some crazy twists. Do... Yeah, I don't know if they're going to pull, um, like, a persona, right, where... You know, it starts off with a main villain, then the next thing you know, oh, there's a god. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, um, it is but... a JRPG, so I think we'll eventually end up fighting god in some way. <laughs> yeah. My theory right now is I hope it ends up leading to, like, uh, uh, this is something, a stupid theory of mine. Like, there's nothing supporting it. It's just, just based on, like, the intro that I saw. Like, I hope the finale of the game, like, they go to, like, the real city yeah. and everything like that. And, like, they I... just... I mean, like the final boss is there. I think like I think we're on the same page with that because the um, enemies and the monsters in this game, as you might have seen, are called humans, and yep. I think they're those humans are being taken from our world and being sent into this refantasial world. But mm -hmm. the goal of the main characters of the game, like our party members, is to find their fantasy, which is our reality. So I think once they come to our reality, they'll realize it's not the utopia that they desired. And the final boss will be like, I don't know, the person playing the game. <laughs> or like, or like, <laughs> oh my, imagine, it's you, we, we got you yeah. using, uh, we, we saw you from the webcam and hidden there and the <laughs> PS5, the imaginary one, it just took you and there you are in the game. Yeah, really funny, the, though, the, but... the final boss is your average Atlas fan. <laughs> Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> and no. a culmination of Atlas fans, just, just a Persona here, a Catherine here, an SMT here. Yeah, that would be hilarious. Be but I, I think some kind of twist like that is going to happen. Um, before we like go on anymore, like, what do you think from Monday? What was the coolest thing or the most, um, or I guess your favorite thing that you saw from the trailer and the showcase? I think it has to be like the way they kind of described how like the calendar system is working in this mm, game yeah where like you're basically it's basically taking days off like and you're basically traveling in this like titan like like ship kind of reminded me give me a uh, xenoblade vibes and everything uh mm. and you're pretty much just going from like city to city and everything like that and like each one takes like a couple of days because when i saw the calendar system i was thinking each area would like take place in one hub world or like maybe multiple hub worlds and then eventually like you just do something for that day then it goes to the next day but no from what it seems like I, I don't have a full grasp on the calendar system but like from what i've gathered here it's like you have to do these missions and it's like i'm pretty sure you have a limited time before like you have to do the main one on this yeah. deadline so it's like it's like okay i gotta like tackle these missions in these days all oh, this one takes up two days so if i do this here then i do this here you know you can save your time i guess you can say yeah and that's one thing i wish that he explained a bit more like what the calendar system is like but i think you're yeah. on I, I think you're on the right track from what i've yeah. gathered as well it seems like in each chapter of the game you will have like a deadline sort of like 
the palaces mm -hmm. in Persona 5, you like have this deadline to send the calling card. But for this, you'll be able to do like side quests, side quests, get people on your team, mm -hmm. get your followers, yeah. do your bounties, do various things to like promote yourself as the new king. And yeah. then eventually there's you'll dungeons have to, like, as well to explore. Yeah. And then eventually you'll have like that final uh, chapter dungeon where you will have to like either go to a new location or you'll have to like go fight a boss and do something there. Yeah, exactly. And I do. But yeah, I did like how it was like this giant moving titan uh, again, Xenoblade vibe, like just him running around through like the area. And, and I love how it is because like you just see him moving. So you just see all these environments coming through. I'm like this. This is great. And and the fact that it's also running on the P5 engine, the same oh, engine yeah. and everything like that, is, is, it, is, is, is it the for me. Persona 5 engine? Like yeah, the it's, PS3 Persona 5 engine? The PS3 wow. Persona 5 engine, yeah, it's the exact oh same. That's, that's what's impressive. Like, because like they literally only used it for two games, P5, and then, I mean, yeah, P5R and everything like that as well, but it was like an enhanced version. But like, then eventually, Metaphor Re Fantasio and everything, that's all with the P5 engine. Wow, that's which is cool. insane. Like, it, it's really really cool but yeah I, I think my favorite thing was definitely like just being in the the giant mech mm -hmm. and the amount of activities you can do and just pretty much being there I, I guess you could say i just like it like a whole like the whole group like hangout dynamic and everything it's like it's, that. it's like a true road trip experience yeah but, exactly but more exactly. of like a gritty fantasy road trip not like a chill road <laughs> trip like uh final yeah. fantasy 15 or something yeah, like these group of people that are like pretty much going. I don't know if I want to say they're like Xenoblade twos, where it was just like everyone was like kind of a stranger to somebody, mm -hmm. and then they just kind of became friends. Actually, no, I will say that uh, because I was gonna say something like Xenoblade three, but more like with Xenoblade three was I more think, like this group yeah. knew each other and this group knew each other, then they just combined. I think two and one are good examples because uh, mm -hmm. Xenoblade one and Xenoblade two, each of the party members are from either a different nation or a different race. I mean, yeah. one, you the have a lot is... of Homs, but then eventually you have a Hyantia, you have a Nopon, you have kind of spoilers for Xenoblade 1, actually. You have mm -hmm. Seven slash Fiora, who yeah. is now a Mechon as well. So yeah, you have exactly. many different races in Xenoblade 1. Mm -hmm. And then even in 2, you have humans, you have Gormati, you have Blades, all different yeah. kinds of Blades. Then you have a Tornin. Sorry, not Tornin. You have a. Um, where is he from? Uh, Tantalese. Uh, you have a yeah. um, um, Ardanian, you have a Nopon, you have a whole bunch of people on yeah. the team. It's it's, it's cool. It's definitely like with like definitely with two like two like no one knew each other. Like Rex, this was Rex's first time going out and exploring out in this whole world. He meets Nia, he meets Aura, he meets Zeke, like he meets Bridget. Like all these people are just brand new to him. He knew none of these. Yeah, Shulk the only at least had like knew three people on his team. And, like, yeah, not even not even Pyra. He meets uh, Nia before yeah. Pyra. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like even then he didn't know her that much. He just he's like, all right, this is someone I'm working with, right? Yeah. Next thing you know, oh, that's spoiler. That's my wife now. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, he, he, yeah. That, that that's how it goes with Xenoblade. <laughs> but um, but yeah. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, with a metaphor as well. It seems as if a lot of the party we haven't seen all the party members, but it looks like a lot of the yeah. party members are of different races, and there seems to be many <laughs> races in this game, like. <laughs> I that's what they're I... highlighting too that's uh, what they're highlighting too from from our main character you just mentioned that because mm -hmm. i just remembered like they highlighted that that he's specifically gathering people from different races yeah and everything like that so we have this rabbit right yeah. uh the red-haired elf girl yeah and then um the silver-haired dude that he has like he's got horns, horns yeah, he, he yeah he which is also the be... same one as that king yeah he looks to be uh so that king or that like guy i don't <clears throat> i guess he's the new king because he assassinated the old king from what it seems in the second trailer mm -hmm. the like yeah. the guy who dies in the first trailer is being killed by that guy i think he's our antagonist yep. i think he's our Definitely. antagonist like but i think there's going to be a twist and i think i don't think he's going to join our side but i think once we defeat him there's going to be a higher force at play higher for the other idea like there's always and uh, there's definitely something there that they're hiding uh as for who who knows because they, they haven't really shown many yeah. characters and like we said, we've only seen so far four characters that was playable, but I'm pretty sure they're hiding way more characters. Like, there's no doubt about there's, that we're going to be able to switch our party members with all these other people and all that stuff. Uh, and yeah, so far from the characters we've seen, I think they look pretty cool. Yeah. And I honestly just can't wait to see who exactly would join us. I'm not too sure if any of our followers would join us, because I that think that would be very interesting. interesting, because the follower system, I don't know if you 
uh, felt this way, but it really, really reminded me of Heroes in Xenoblade 3. So you know how you like yeah. do the hero mm -hmm. quest, you finish the quest, and you get that class, which you can put on yeah. one of your party members, and it, it's sort of like a job system. Sort of like Final yeah, exactly. Fantasy V, Bravely Default, and this archetype system is similar to that, but you don't do the hero quest, you do like the follower social links. So that's yeah, interesting, exactly. and I'm assuming your social link or follower rank ups will strengthen that archetype. But mm -hmm. I'm curious, like, you know how your heroes were your seventh party member in Xenoblade 3? I'm wondering yeah. if you can add your follower to your party as well in this game. Yeah, yes, like that would be, nice. be interesting though, because like, like I guess I don't, I wouldn't, I don't want to say like optional characters, because like that's pretty much what the seventh characters were. Like a lot of them were just pretty much optional characters. Yeah. You could choose to get them or not. Um, but I don't know if they're gonna. I'm pretty sure there's gonna be important story characters that would join you mandatory. But I am wondering if they are actually gonna do that thing where like, okay, uh, there's optional characters that can join your party and everything, because that that is a staple of RPGs. Yeah. I mean, the biggest example being the original FF7 with Yuffie and oh, yeah. Vincent. Yeah. They were like both optional except in remake. I heard remake uh both of them are yes, mandatory at this point. They just joined. They're mandatory. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yuffie is mandatory and then Vincent joins your team. Vincent and Sid join your team in rebirth, but they won't be playable till part three. Got yeah. it, yeah. So like they made a mandatory there, but yeah, they're optional. I'm not too I don't know if we want to say that like, RPGs are still doing that because like I feel like nowadays RPGs just have everyone be part of like the main squad. Yeah. Uh there's there hasn't really been an optional like choice like that in RPGs. At least I've played in like recent yeah. times the big ones like can, Persona. Yeah, you can um I I'm trying to think now as well, because the only ones I can think of are like classic RPGs. Like Chrono Trigger had like one character, I won't say who. I don't, I don't know if you played it mm -hmm. before, but it, it had, um it had one was character. It Magnus? Yeah, it's Magnus basically Magus. Yeah, yeah, Magus is like uh he he's sort of like a Yuffie, but like I wouldn't say it's harder to miss, but it's a very cool like story kind of twist where he comes onto your team, so that's really cool. Yeah. I, I don't think many mm, I mean I feel like m there are modern RPGs that have done it, I just can't think of them right now. You know, Maybe, I was gonna yeah. actually say one that's closest that still does it, it's Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem still the one that does oh, it. Oh yeah. Not as much. Yeah. But, Cause like I mean, three houses you can choose to recruit people from other houses. Awakening you can yep. choose to recruit people on the field, just like classic Fire yeah. Emblem. You can choose yeah. to recruit them. And yep. um, engage didn't. Yeah, it was, do it was that. two of them. I think I'm not too sure if you can get it away was, with not it was talking two, to. Yeah, I, d I did miss someone engage. Like uh, Saphir and this other guy, you could like they're optional or missable. Mm -hmm. And I missed the other guy, but I got Saphir. I think I, I think I know what you're talking about the old. I think it was an old guy, yeah, right? Yeah, it's a monk it dude. Maybe. Yeah, Lyndon. Yeah. Yeah, him. Yeah. Under crit god. <laughs> yeah. But um, basically, yeah, yeah like like Firearms really like the only one that does it still. Like I'm wondering if they're actually gonna do the same thing here in Metaphor because I feel like there's more to the, just the followers and just like giving you the class because it feels like you just get that class like immediately from just starting to talk with them. I feel like there has to be more, right? Like because I feel like you have to rank up something. And you like level things up. If this is the same, you know, this is the same team that worked on P5. So I'm pretty sure they want to add elements from P5, like you know, where you get like bonuses. You know, like I was saying in my breakdown video, I was like, I really, really, really hope the confidant perks are back because I, Agreed, yeah. I, lo I love Persona 3 Reload, but I was a little disappointed that the social links didn't have bonuses. And I was like, they, mm -hmm, I would yeah. love, I would have loved if they did that because. That would have given me more incentive to do them. I still did them to get the Persona EXP bonuses and to see the social links and yeah. stuff. But mm -hmm. it, from a gameplay point of view, I almost feel like the dorm hangouts were, I wouldn't say better, but they had like gameplay incentives to them because they help with your theories yeah. and stuff. So I really, really, really hope that these um yeah um follower bonuses really have a, a gameplay incentive to them as well like i think yeah, they'll strengthen the, the archetype of course like the archetype will probably get stronger with stat bonuses mm -hmm. new attacks new skills but i think maybe um if you get to like rank three or something maybe they'll join your party or have the ability to join your party and then like rank something else they'll get like uh special privileges in battle or something like that i don't know yeah agree yeah i know exactly and, like i'm actually looking at the trailer here a little bit let me actually pull this up here but like 
I was actually looking like because I do see at some point there are like I guess people that are normally your followers kind mm -hmm. of like with you and everything at some point so I pretty sure I, I want to believe at some point these people whether they're mandatory or not like they actually will join your party yeah. in some way shape or form you know if it's optional I'm down with it but it kind of sucks so that means like majority of the main cutscenes are kind of like gonna be skipped upon or something it's like ah eh, they're not that relevant so but you know there we'll was a though. headline that I saw I didn't read the article yet so I have to go back and read the article and if someone who's watching this right now if you let me know in the comments I can fact check that but there was mm -hmm. a headline that said that metaphor will have seven party members so there will be like constant party members like protagonist stroll hulkenberg uh heisman uh, and maybe like three other people will be mainstays but could that seventh person be like swappable with a like um follower or could you add an eighth person who is a follower so yeah. that's what i am a little confused about not confused but like um you have those four characters i mentioned which we saw in the showcase mm -hmm. yeah then, and, then, and i think you mentioned here like the picture i sent you because you said you said mm -hmm. seven characters um like i think i see seven characters or maybe maybe it's actually six actually let me see, let me see. no it's seven because like i'm not too sure uh, all yes, those yeah. are gonna be so there's the girl with the long blonde hair i think her name is juna mm -hmm. we saw her briefly in the second trailer and then the girl yep. all the way to the right, I don't know who she is. I don't know if she I has think, a name. I think I, yeah, I think I saw them at we, one we point. Saw, we saw like, her I, in the first trailer, though. And then the guy mm -hmm. on the left is like the... It's, he's like another beast man. But he's like more of like yeah. an actual beast, yeah. Yeah, I think I remember... He, he, yeah, I remember him. He had like the white hair, the yeah. mustache, the glasses. Yep, okay, so I... One, I, two, I, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. Yeah. Actually, I think, I think the guy on the left is different from the Gauntlet Runner pilot with the white hair. I, or I, he so. might be the same one. I'm not sure. I, it, it's it's hard to see in this picture. It it, it might be mm -hmm. him. Yeah. But we'll, we'll see. I think we will have those um, mainstay party members. But I'm I'm curious what the followers are gonna do. Like, are the followers yeah. gonna be on our party? Are they gonna be swappable? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, like, we're definitely getting their archetypes, but, like, what else are we going to do with them? I am hoping, like, I am hoping that they are hiding the fact that, like, we can actually get more people. Like, I, like obviously, they're definitely hiding some major character that would join us eventually, right? Like, because, let's be real, I feel like with RPGs like that, there's always a major character to, like, to hide. Not always, but, like, a lot of the times, they like to hide one major character to kind of, like, avoid everyone. And then just, like, all right, here you go. This is the character you get until you play the game. And it's going to um, be a human. <laughs> No, he, <laughs> it's a human, just a ra random human. He's in a suit and everything. Uh, but the other one was um, like, yeah. So like your fo the followers, like the hidden, like the characters. Like maybe if you complete them, you get access to them as optional characters you mm. can put in your party and everything. And they have their own strengths and weaknesses and all that stuff that when they join you. Yeah. I'm but like... I do hope that if it is just seven, I mean, I'm fine with that. But I do hope that there are hiding some characters and everything like that behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, so what are your th <laughs> th this is one question i've been meaning to ask you what are your mm -hmm. thoughts on the music because i'm sure you've heard the battle theme and that is mm -hmm. yes like we we know shoji meguro's music we know persona 3 like we know mass yeah. mass destruction we know yeah. like, when the moon reaches to stars and we know like time to make history reach out to the truth um mm -hmm. heaven signs of love then of course you know like last surprise take over like all these like iconic songs from persona and then we hear the metaphor battle theme and i was literally yeah. blown away because i was like yeah, no, it was crazy. this does not sound like the same guy who made all these other songs it's yeah no crazy. same here i agree bro like it, it was like it was different like very very different from what shoji meguro is mainly known for and everything but i i loved it i vibed with it like you don't i haven't even heard this sound from him even when you play like SMT3, SMT3 did not sound like this at all. If anything, you, it still had his like. Yeah. Have you played Strange Journey? N actually, no, I have. I do have it on my 3DS. Uh, okay. I bought it like, like two or three years before like the mm. 3DS announcement was done. Some of my I do, friends I do are saying it. that this kind of gives them Strange Journey vibes. So that's that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Like I'm pretty sure he's done something similar uh, to Metaphor and everything. That it doesn't doubt me, but it's just like. He's, it's not like that's what he's mainly known for, you know. He's mainly known for the stuff here in Persona and SMT3 and everything like that. 
Um, and speaking of that battle theme, I will say that battle theme was oh, it was beautiful, bro. It was ten out of ten. The, like when when the vocals kicked in, I don't know what they yeah. were saying, but you know what? Keep spitting. That's all. <laughs> that's all I have to say. Like, yeah, they were going in. I'm like they're they're vibing. That's good enough for me. Cause um, there was a interview that Megro did, and he was like. This is going to be a different OST from what I've worked on before. I'm going to have influences from religious hymns and Buddhist chants. And we definitely heard that with yeah. this battle theme. And like, it, was, the, it was so good, dude. And the chorus went so hard. And what's kind of funny is everyone is saying, oh, it reminds me of the Three Houses theme, right? My friend who I was reacting mm -hmm. to the Game Awards with, like the whole Game Awards ceremony, we got to that part in Metaphor and he he's never played a persona game he's only played three houses though he loves three houses mm -hmm. and he heard that theme he's like dude this is three houses and i was like yeah dude <laughs> yeah yeah at least someone vibes with something from another game that's a good thing you know what yeah. i mean like someone gets a vibe from a different game like i want to try it out because it, it's giving me similar vibes and everything yeah. like i want to try out uh stellar blade because it did give me near vibes yeah. i love near automata and near replicants when i saw stellar blade i'm like hey but it helps because you know someone sees it and like let's t let's open up my you know open up my i guess my repertoire of games and you know try something new maybe i've, I've never played this at all i've yeah. never played an, uh, an atlas like game let me try it out you know exactly or you know just to try something new and everything and i think it's honestly really cool yeah a lot uh, of my friends who aren't really into rpgs and stuff they're seeing metaphor and they're like oh this is unique this is cool this is really interesting and i send some of them the battle theme and they're like whoa this is nothing like i've ever heard before and i'm like yeah yeah they're, they're, I'm, I'm glad to hear that they're getting impressed by that i need to show i don't know if like uh my friends have heard it as well but i do need to hear i need to show it to them and everything hopefully yeah. it convinces uh some of them that aren't into it to, to buy it but like i think just in general this showcase does a good job of making me want the game even more yeah. a lot of people who were on the fence of the game that were like yeah i'll wait for a sale a lot i've seen a lot of people say never mind there, this is gonna be a day, day one, one buy yeah a, a lot of people who i talk to who were, I was like dude metaphor is so good don't sleep on metaphor don't sleep on it now they're like yeah I'm, I'm on top of this this is this yeah. is something I'm looking forward to you you and you and me bro we've been on this like day one like <laughs> as soon as it was shown off you we were like since re fantasy <laughs> yeah like like I've known about it and when I saw the first trailer I'm like I'm all in like put, yeah. put, <laughs> I'm all in bro <laughs> give me whatever you want yeah, give me whatever you get uh, whatever you have bro like I'm ready to see this game in like full yeah. force bro um Another thing about the music, I think it's really cool that a lot of it takes place in the character's head. He was saying, yeah. like, Galaga the fairy puts <laughs> the music in his mind. That's that was interesting. That like, was see... so funny because... Yeah. What are you saying? <laughs> you, don't, you don't hear, like, anyone say this because it's just music you hear in the background, so it's like, whatever. Yeah. But the fact that they, they clarify, well, yeah, the, what you're hearing... Um, is this the music? The music you hear? Oh no, it's just in his head, you know? Yeah. <laughs> in reality, it's all quiet and everything, which I thought was really funny. Yeah. Unless that's gonna play something very important in the story. That would be interesting. If they literally pull some of this, something random, is like, ah, is there music in his head? You know what I mean? Then something else massive happens, like, like, why didn't I think of this? You know, like, why didn't I think of, like, the fact that they were gonna use this at some point, but I feel like they're gonna use it. I, it's uh, something small, they're gonna want us to forget about it, but it's gonna be brought up. Watch. I think... <laughs> It was, yeah, you're right. It was funny because before, like, she put the music on in his head, um, it was like complete silence in that area. And then the music came on and it was just like, oh, and I was like, oh my God, this is all happening in his mind. But I think it will have mm -hmm. some gameplay effects. It might have like some buffs that it gives you or something, I'm guessing. But if it has story, like, implications, that would be nice too. Yeah. I'll be, I'll, I think that'll be the most interesting thing. You go to like some place, something happens, the music is like basically gone. It's just all silence. Or maybe mm -hmm. a crowded city. So all you just hear is the people. Like, all you just hear is silence. The people talking and just you know just general general crowd noise and everything. Yeah. Something to set the atmosphere, I guess you can say. Yeah. So like other things mm -hmm. I wanted to talk about. We we got we got through a lot actually. So um <laughs> what few few things I wanted to talk about are specifically towns and side quests. So what do you think of those? Because that was the part of the showcase where i was like oh it, it looks cool it looks interesting but it seems like pretty basic right now we're like doing regular mm -hmm. rpg stuff going to a town talking to people getting quests getting our equipment mm -hmm. getting the bounties like getting information from the informant but i feel like showing us the bare minimum right now it's gonna like expand more and more and more and we're gonna see more stuff eventually 
and yeah. this was uh, around the time where he was like saying oh i can't show you more right now we'll show you more later we'll show you <laughs> like there's a lot more to the stuff so like what do you what do you think about a lot of that stuff yeah he did this a lot <laughs> yeah. but i will say though the town right like the towns in the mission first of all i gotta say the towns there's there it's not open world like you said it's yeah. it's more like just like giant hub worlds honestly i love this because it's kind of like how i want like persona 6 to be in an aspect like, yeah like persona 5 gave us a little bit of a taste of it like you know but it was like it was like slight large areas but nothing like crazy huge it just had a lot more to explore compared to previous persona games but here like we we have like a huge town like a huge huge hub world like so far like only little bits of load of uh, load zones in between and everything like this is what i want to see like in persona in general yeah, like it's it, like, like a this, bigger this shibuya great. of persona 5 mm -hmm. it's like a bigger persona 5 shibuya yeah exactly yeah. and like from what i'm seeing so far from with these towns and but combined with the beautiful visuals i love it like they're, they're huge and they, and he knew like how to make like the background just pop out and look good and everything yeah. uh so towns i gotta say i love them i love them and as for missions i think this kind of ties into what i said like how like doing missions take up days and everything depending on the mission um uh, but i am i am pretty excited about that i do like that uh each one has like their own little quest and reward like so far from what i saw it was mainly like monsters but i remember like each one had like their bounties and everything yeah. like if you kill a specific monster but I'm pretty sure that's how we're probably gonna like fight like rare monsters that'll probably like give us like maybe rare like rare elements and everything. It's like this is how you get this item and if with this item you get like access to like stronger equipment, maybe maybe a material that's only dropped by that monster that can upgrade only this specific skill, which is something that we have to talk about by the way, about the archetypes, because yeah. like there's stuff there's like a whole skill tree kind of thing there. Yeah. So maybe like a material that you get specifically from there. Uh, now upgrade that yeah. skill tree. Yeah, because he what was I mean? emphasizing, he was like, you should do these bounties to prepare for the things that are coming up ahead because they'll give you like really good equipment and gear and yeah. items and stuff. He was like, the, he said specifically <laughs> something like the difficulty and how tough you find this game will depend on how much you do the side quests and the bounties. So I was like, oh, okay. That's going to be very interesting. It, people who play RPGs but don't do anything, they just kind of play through the main story or going to get a kick in the butt. Yeah. <laughs> when they see this, it's like, there, there's a lot of people who don't really like, like, this, like to skip a lot of things and everything. And then they, they, they realize, wow, I'm struggling. But yet me, like as someone who plays a lot of RPGs, I always like, I'm, I'm not, I don't grind on purpose. I just kind of kill whatever's in front of me, yeah. like as a way to just get XP. So that way I don't overgrind. Yeah. But then I realize like, I'm really strong. <laughs> like, yeah. so I end up, I guess, over grinding just by just playing the game and everything. But yeah. it helps like you out, like, you know, go like. I into towns and like get the side quests and do them. And then when I like do the side quests in like my downtime, then I feel like I'm prepared mm -hmm. for what's coming up ahead. So I think, I think Great, this yeah. game will, have a little more emphasis on that and yep. i think my biggest concern is i hope that they're good and fun side quests i hope they're not like um i think the go-to punching bag is like xenoblade one fetch quests mm, like yeah bro things. xenoblade one's quests are horrible like not saying <laughs> all of them are bad like i love my drug dealing not pawn yeah, yeah. <laughs> um there are only a couple that i i remember and everything yeah. like, but other than there, that like majority no, of them are kind of just there are no hero quests or blade quests from three and two or even affinity quests in x those were very well done and mm -hmm. xenoblade one has some good ones but like i hope um there are still some like good quality fun engaging side quests with good rewards good gameplay and good yeah. like storylines mm -hmm. as well because like of course yes. we'll have bounties we'll have like basic quests as well but i hope some of them are good as well like more, like i want like better. you want to have quests side quests that like gravitate towards you that's something that like makes you really like yeah i love this i do you remember this random side quest you know like enter side quest here that's why i think i remember a lot of uh nears automatas and everything it, mm. it dealt with a lot of like heavy subjects obviously a lot of those side quests were like very memorable to me because it started off as just like this normal conversation then you see like this person's like debating their life this person's actually uh insane you actually helped out uh, a bad person you know what i mean like yeah. there's a lot of things that made these quests very memorable and it's because they made sure they were like all right if people are forced or made to do these quests we need to make them memorable and everything like that and that's something i like and i want to see hopefully metaphor does it because i'm really like from what i've heard with ff16 side quests they're not that yeah. memorable at all like everyone says like i haven't played it either but everyone has said that like it's just not good it's like it's it's very forgettable and it's it's very tedious from what i've heard yeah some of them are nice in the sense that they give you some cool character backstories and stuff 
but mm -hmm. those come like really close to the end of the game and then the other ones are just like random people who need your help and you're like i don't really feel like helping you <laughs> because it's just yeah. you know, it's not a fun scenario or the reward isn't very good so it's not a really good payoff in contrast yeah, exactly. i loved uh ff7 rebirth's quest because each of the mm -hmm. side quests are tied to a specific party member like there might be a quest for tifa or yuffie or barrett or red 13 and there are mm -hmm. many of these quests and like they're kind of like the co-star of the quest it's like cloud and that person and they're like yeah. going on this quest like i mean everyone's going on that quest but like they're the two big kind of people in that quest of course yeah, Cloud, like the main focus the on it, yeah yeah but um and that's also a way that the game levels up the affinity of those characters which later allows you to do more fun and interesting things with them so we'll see i mean this game has yeah. the follower mechanic so i think that's one form of side content and side quests you can do yeah. but i'm that's one thing yeah. i've been questioning about the archetype system uh, and all that stuff because you know like we are gonna have to like you know obviously continue these followers and also to get like unlocks for these uh for the archetypes and everything but yeah i want to know like are we going to be restricted to skills based on the archetypes or we'll be able to like transfer them over to like just general you know general use and everything that's or, like they locked like interesting a... because th that's also something i thought of because like again i'm bringing up xenoblade 3 because the hero system and archetypes of system are very similar yeah so like <laughs> you know in xenoblade 3 when you like for example, if you gain the ability to um, um, equip, not equip, but like become the um, like a Signifer class, and then yeah. you level up Signifer to level ten, then you can you you can become another class, but bring like Signifer arts and Signifer skills to whichever other class you have. So mastering exactly, that yeah. class will have you use those master arts and master skills into other um what should we call it classes and other like mm -hmm. situations and all, all that stuff so yeah. i want to see if metaphor does that too because they have the th they have the ability where you can or anyone in your party member or in your party can have that class so like they showed the brawler once you unlock the brawler every one of your party members can equip brawler but once yeah, you like that was funny. max out like maybe if you like do a certain number of the follower requirements or if you gain a certain number number of skills or something maybe you can take those brawler skills over to the mage or the seeker or the knight or something like that that would be that would be really cool especially like i mean then we'd have like unique variety yeah i guess brawlers like you have one that's focused on like healing one that's yeah. i guess maybe if you're just focused on just doing pure physical damage yeah um and then of course one that's more focused on being a mage but you're still all in the same class you know yeah. what i mean you but you probably don't get the ma maximum benefits of it you know because they definitely want to like make you be like all right i want to yeah. be this class you know what i mean yeah you'll have secondary things that you can have as like uh supporting skills i guess from other classes in your main mm -hmm. class um have you played other games with um a job system like um like of course xenoblade but have you played like bravely default or final fantasy 5 or any, something like that yeah like i played like i remember trying out the original ff uh ff1 mm. uh like they you pick the class i think literally beforehand like on the gba you pick yeah. the class beforehand um there was uh, yeah bravely default i didn't get that far but i remember in the beginning of the game you know you're giving like oh yeah make these character specific classes and everything uh, but yeah, they, I didn't really fully like play one until I guess. I, would, I mean, you can kind of say Xenoblade Two in a sense is kind of Xenoblade similar to that sort of, aspect. Yeah. It depends depends on the blade that you use, uh, because at the end of the day, the characters just play based on the blade and their regular stats. Yeah. But um, Fire Emblem, I guess you could say yeah. as well. Fire Emblem has its own like class systems and everything. Yeah. But yeah, Xenoblade Three is another one like based on like its heroes and everything and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely going to be that character, <laughs> this character, the character archetype in the game yeah. that you're going to like, and then you find out, oh, it's actually the worst one in the game. There's going to be something there. Like, yeah, this archetype, top tier. This one, low tier. Dude, you know what I mean? That was funny. The same thing happened with Xenoblade. Like, a lot of, like, um, Juniper's class, which was the sniper 
or a stalker. It was called stalker. Everyone yeah. wanted that class. They're like, oh, this class looks so cool. You're going to use a bow. And it turned out to be like one of the worst classes in the entire game. Yeah. And then everyone and, and saw Signifer and they're slow, like, you know? they're like, Signifer, that's so lame. You're just waving a flag. You're not doing anything. Turns out to be the best class in the game. <laughs> yeah. It's easy. Like, you can't go anywhere without that class. It's like, it's like the classes that I like, right? Turns out that they're not the best classes. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. But, I'm just really, I'm, as you know, like this is Atlas. Atlas is known to just be like at at a certain point in the beginning of the game, you know, you struggle a bit, you know, you have your abilities and everything, and then pretty much as you go through, next thing you know, you're pretty much like a god, like mid game and everything, like you know, like there's gonna be that one, like, you know, persona's case is a persona, you know, or like in SMT it's a demon. There's that one thing that like drops that just changes everything for the game, and like mm. it just basically becomes like cruise mode. Yeah. Um, and all that stuff. So I'm very curious to see if there's going to be like an archetype that's similar to that. It's just going to be like game breaking. Now, when you get that archetype <laughs> and people are like, you need this archetype yeah. on your character. All the like, guides right are going to be like, you need this one. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But I do like that, though. Like uh, that. It makes it unique compared to SMT. It makes yeah. it unique compared to Persona. Persona, besides, um, you know, the main character, the main protagonist, your characters are pretty much locked to like their persona what skills they have you can't really experiment outside of what they have you know um smt you create and build the demons as you want they basically have their own stats and but the archetypes here is like every character will be able to change depending on which job you kind of go for in this case and everything and mm -hmm. like we talked about like how we're going to be getting followers and everything and that's how we get these archetypes there's going to be way way more archetypes that we'll be able to experiment yeah. with and whatnot and i wonder if we're going to have like unique i'm pretty sure yeah, though each each character like each of the main characters like they have their own unique like archetypes and everything mm -hmm. that we have and i'm very curious to see how they're gonna like implement it where a lot of people like to play as the canon one yeah. right so like i wonder how they're gonna implement it where like the other archetypes the more you use them they implement the skills into like i guess the canon one for the character you get to yeah I mean. that's interesting because um an example i can think of is xenoblade chronicles x like the one on the wii u you have many mm -hmm. different branching classes which you, like you start off as a drifter and then you can go into one class tree where you'll get into like one like maximum class and then you'll eventually have to go into another class tree and do another class and you'll get all of these <laughs> like classes maxed out you'll get all their arts you'll get all their skills and all the end game builds go back to drifter they go back to the very first class because those yeah. that drifter class isn't restricted by we uh, the kinds of weapons and the kind of firearms and the kind of melee weapons that they can use or the types of yeah. arts and skills they can use they can use everything because they're the drifter class so yeah uh, that's yeah. cool yeah so i think if you learn all these skills you're like a jack of all trades you go back to seeker and you can use all of them because that's what he described Agreed. seeker as like jack of all trades kind of also what was your kind of prediction about the skill tree you were saying something about that right the skill tree i don't know what i what i can say about that because like we didn't really see much of it but like each i think each archetype has a skill tree of its own and everything I just don't know how exactly we're going to unlock it. Is it going to be like based on levels or is it going to be like points we have to grind out? Kind of similar to um, going back to Xenoblade 3 again, but Xenoblade 3's um, Ouroboros system where like you kind of have to grind these like mm -hmm. points out so you can level up their version of the skill tree and everything. Yeah. And like the, the, oh, yeah, the specific thing, skills yeah. can be Yeah, and the specific skills can be chosen, like shared between others that can be carried over so you can have it for the character and everything. Yeah. Like so far from what we've seen, it's just like a skill tree. I didn't really see too much of it was like, oh, you have to like accumulate points and everything. And then you like unlock them and everything or it's based on like levels and the follower stuff. Because yeah. I'm pretty sure it's going to be they're going to do something where it's like you have to accumulate a specific amount of something in order to like level it up and everything. Yeah. But it looks so huge. It looks really, really huge. It and imagine big, that's yeah. the case. If, I hope that's not the case with like every single archetype like it's like this huge thing and it's, it just becomes like this grind fest but yeah. I wouldn't mind it as well like as well because like I, I do like just making all these like crazy builds in uh, RPGs and whatnot I, I think but it would be nice it if does... it's tied into like the social links or the bonding system so like the more mm -hmm. you rank up that um, follower who's associated with that archetype the more buffs and the more skills you get I think that would be cool but we'll we'll see how it goes because yeah that skill tree is huge 
and I think um, mm-hmm. one thing that I noticed and some other people noticed as well is some archetypes might evolve into other archetypes because like there was the really? like there was like a knight and then it was like a warrior and dark knight or something and they're all on like you know it was like a vitruvian man mm-hmm. kind of like stretched out like yeah. that with different limbs yeah like on each limb like on the on one arm it was like knight something else dark knight and it was like kind of like a linear kind of pathway and i was like That's dude cool. what if we can like evolve our archetypes <laughs> that would be so cool that would be sick like like actually that's now that's sick actually and maybe depending well, on which one you go for like a fire emblem thing where yeah fire emblem yeah you know you, you have you have the uh for example uh especially three Eastern houses one. you have like the basic intermediate advanced and master exactly yeah like or in in get or going back to like i guess more traditional sense right like so for example in fireman engage you know you had the axe fighter yeah and the axe fighter has two choices uh what's level up to can you would you like to become a berserker just more focused on just your strength yeah you have like less hit but you're just there just dealing tons and tons of hits or would you rather be a warrior where you have uh less less uh less strength uh, slightly more skill and everything but you're, you're more versatile um, you don't get access to, like better like the S rank weapons and everything, but you do yeah. have a bow. You know what I mean? Yeah. Each one bringing like their unique uniqueness to the table. I mean, another game actually. You know, I'm gonna bring up Tokyo Mirage Sessions here actually because Tokyo okay. Mirage Sessions. I have not played that yet. Like that. I I'm curious to maybe give that a shot eventually because mm-hmm. it's um it is like, it is another Atlas game. It is. It, it is. is Atlas. It is. Yeah, right? It is. It's just Nintendo uh, with the fire and stuff, but. Uh, yeah. Basically, if you ha- if you get if you ask for my TODR of that game, it's fun gameplay, uh, fun hangouts. It's alright. Uh, alright, so it's just okay. You know, you know like the, you the know what people were saying. Okay. They said mm-hmm. that Metaphor is the true Shin Megami Tensei X Persona, <laughs> or Shin Megami <laughs> Tensei X Fire Emblem. Sorry, really? that we okay, we were all w- oh, hoping for that we wanted Tokyo Mirage Sessions to be when we heard, first yeah. heard it was Fire Emblem uh, X um, Shin Megami Tensei we thought it would be like this Dude, cool yeah, exactly. like high fantasy vibe but we got metaphor now <laughs> yeah no exactly like the same here but like that's literally what I was expecting I was expecting some D characters like like the demon like Demi Fiend you know you had a uh, Flynn and then meeting characters like Krom and yeah. Ike you know so, like, characters like that not like um you know not like what we got and everything I mean don't get me wrong I think it was unique but you know it was a shock <laughs> kind of, it was yeah a very very huge shock and everything but the reason i mentioned that is because there's only like i guess there's a total of eight uh classes or something in the game i think it was eight or seven i think it might be seven yeah seven classes right but then when you promote them right it's you have two choices you, you have two classes that you can pretty much promote them to like oh do you want them to become uh like for example uh, the lord class for main character itsuki can either go the great lord which is something that's very common for Krom and everything or do you go to the conqueror and everything each mm, one has like okay. their own different unique stats that's and everything cool. that would kind of like benefit you so i'm very curious to see what kind of uh what that's gonna like which one did you see with like the main one that you said guys i heard dark knight what was the other one? Oh, i don't remember i have to i have to i can actually go back to the showcase right now and see but mm-hmm. It was let's see I, I I did see Dark Knight somewhere in there I think, yeah. But as mm-hmm. I'm uh, searching for that, you can start talking about what you feel about the combat because I want to know what you think Ooh. of the because I I have some thoughts on the combat but I want to hear what you have to say about it. I I personally think it's great like it looks really fun obviously you know they have the persona. The Persona 5 UI that uh, that was pretty much inspired by a lot, like you know, a lot of RPGs are getting inspired by and everything. So they're definitely using the P5 things, you know, with one button being attack, one being your skills or magic in this case. You have the pass system. Uh, but what I love is like it's also like again taking inspiration from SMT in that sense where you have the press turn system. Mm-hmm. So you hit an enemy for I, I did see press turn icons turn. on top. They didn't they didn't mention it, but I saw press turn icons. I was like, yeah, that so, was another thing. I was like, oh, I wanted you to talk about how press turn plays into this. That would have been cool. Yeah, agreed. But also, they, did, they didn't really I, talk I about sent it. you that link, and that link starts at 3450. And at 3450, if you pause, if you look at the left leg, you see Knight, Mage Knight, Paladin, Dark Knight all connected. So, oh, okay, it, I see, I see, and then if you look on the other side, you see Commander and General, which are connected. 
And then, okay. um, funnily mm -hmm. enough, near the crotch area, you see brawler and fist fist fight or something. I don't um, know. What yeah, that something is. like that. I can't really read it either, but that's actually interesting. I see cleric, obviously. Cleric for and something on top of that. I can't read what no. that says. Wizard no, and mage. Wizard and mage on the like top near the head. It says wizard yes, and mage. That, so so those are like connected, and so I think you can either evolve your archetype or like transform it into similar archetypes Th that would mm -hmm. be that would be really cool also. yeah because it, it's like like a bunch of different classes now i'm not too sure if this is like the various classes that you mastered maybe i'm not too sure and i don't i don't this... think each of these classes are designated to uh, a separate follower i think mm -hmm. th like each limb will be dedicated to like one follower and they'll probably evolve or something i don't know this is just I'm throwing some predictions out there yeah because actually i'm going to slow the footage down actually because i want to see every character has the same thing now as for how they unlock it i'm not too sure because i didn't really describe that too much but i do see that everyone has kind of like the same uh the same the same tree, tree and everything yeah yeah so every every character is going to have that i think maybe the, the, i think it might be like maybe the different classes what they unlock for you and everything Oh, this is also something we gotta talk about. I completely yeah. forgot about that. Like also, yeah, certain skills seeker, have like different seeker names. and mage seeker. Mm -hmm. Seeker yeah. and like, I, I, I'm very excited because that's so many classes there are in the game. That's gonna be insane. Yeah, bro. There's gonna be so crazy, much, yeah. so much experimentation, and and, and, yeah. and this is only just with four characters. Um, but yeah, there's a there's a lot of experimentation we're gonna go for. Like you know, like we're gonna have like a specific class. Like there's gonna be like the one knight class, like you mentioned. It's just like okay, it's just the basic one. You know, the, it has the basic stuff. But then it's like, all right, you can deviate from that path. Here's a here's a stronger knight that has uh, more like rank, or or here's this class that focuses on magic. You know what I mean? That has like has like a hint of magic and everything, yeah, too, um... which I think would be really cool. To, like just just for characters who are like uh, dual attackers and everything, mm -hmm. they experiment with. One of the things I was gonna say about the combat, right, is like I love how you know looking at the skills here. There's a lot of skills here that I'm not even recognizing by name. Right, like for example you have like this random one that here i'm looking at right now called dark sword mm. right but then you have like a traditional one here that you can see mudo mudo being there obviously we know what that does oh no not there okay because the fire electric and ice spells are different but it seems like the yes. dark and the light are the same yes like, that's what i've in, noticed too it's like in, cyclone and everything it, it's called a, instead of um agi zeo and bufu it is bot blizz and something Psych. else Psych, like for cyclone i think if i'm saying here like it deals weak wind damage yes psych uh see day here like dei is that healing maybe i'm I'm not too sure, but like they changed the names I'm and everything. To, much they yeah, they changed a lot of the names, but it's very interesting that Mudo's. Yeah, Bot, Blizz, and Kande. So Bot is the fire, Blizz is the ice, and Kande is the electric. So they're not using Agi, Agi Bufu, and Zio this time around. But mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting yeah. they're using some from SMT, but some not because Mudo and I think Hama, if they have Mudo, will probably be Hama for light. Mm -hmm that's smt persona yeah they agree yeah yeah and it's like i want to know are they going to only have the six elements because like i think that's the only thing we see there the main six magic elements and then like a physical attack and everything i also did see like almighty i'm going to yeah. assume that like I what i saw they, like i think they will probably bring back like um slash um pierce and strike you think so yeah i think they'll I think separate the physical again I think that made it. I think it made the game like very interesting having three different physicals and everything mm -hmm. like that. It's not yeah. like you could just rely on one physical. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna slash. It's like, oh wait, no, you can't. Yeah. That, you know that what was I mean? fun in Persona Five. Uh, Persona Three Reload, sorry, because in yeah, Persona agreed. Five it was just physical and gun. Which I yep. mean, the gun stuff was cool because that will help. That would help with your like your technical stuff, technical damage. Yep. But I liked that you had to be a little more strategic in Persona Three. Yeah, because like Persona Five, like there was barely any uh, Persona shadows that used the uh, like gun skills and everything, so it really didn't yeah. matter too much. It was mainly just physical and all that stuff. So I, I wouldn't mind like the three split again. Mm -hmm. um, Nuke and Psych Technicus was also really cool and everything. Yeah. If they want to use something new, like for example, we never we never like water element. I don't know if they want to like do a water element. I think that'll be nice. Yeah. Ground, right? Like there's there's a lot of possibilities that they have open, but yeah. so far from what I've seen. 
I've only seen the six for the skills. But other than that, like when it comes to the gameplay from what I've seen so far, it's just looking similar to um, SMT and Persona. And I don't mind it. Like, I think that's great. Like, I feel like it's, yeah. it has a sense of familiarity. What uh, are your who... thoughts on the, um, they, ca they call it fast and squad. So fast is action stuff in the overworld. Mm -hmm. So like just killing the enemies, like the weaker enemies, like one shot yeah. them. That's Where it cool. becomes like that's... an action RPG. Yeah. yeah. I am still I I still have a lot of questions about this because have you have you heard of the game Trails Through Daybreak or Kuronoki Seki? I've heard yeah, I've heard yeah, of it. Yeah, so I, what's interesting about that game is if you are in turn based, you can switch to action whenever you want. And vice versa. Mm -hmm. If you're in action, you can switch to turn based whenever you want. But in metaphor, it seems like if you go from action to squad, meaning if you go from action to turn based, you're stuck mm -hmm. in turn based. You've committed to going to turn based. Mm -hmm. And okay. that that's interesting to me because that's cool, but like what is the benefit of having that action command and if you want to stay in action, could you theoretically not transition to turn-based and keep going in action? Like, they give that prompt where it says squad, and once you click on squad, you will transition to the turn-based commands, which mm -hmm. will yeah. be better theoretically because you'll have your whole party member, like, you'll have your whole party fighting alongside of you. But if you wanted to do that whole battle in action, like, you know how he's fighting that lion? What if you, like, stayed there fighting him in action? And didn't go into turn base. Like, I feel like, I don't know. Maybe I feel like I don't know if I'm gonna say like they're gonna like force you into it and everything like that because I feel like it's only um what's it called? I feel like it's only there for like just for like the stronger enemies and as they become weak, it's just like you could just one shot them and everything. So I think it's yeah. only gonna be used for weak enemies because I'm real dude. Sometimes grinding out the weak enemies and everything like that like kind of pointless you know like yeah it, it can get really annoying and really tedious like when i know whenever you did in persona and everything you got to go up against a weak enemy you just press the start button just kind of speed up the yeah. gameplay and everything that's and why here, Ryuji's like, oh, insta kill ability was nice in memento so you could just drive <laughs> and run them over but yeah there's no point I, in grinding them because like uh you I, know i hope if there's some like mid-tier enemies that aren't like super weak or like super strong I hope you can still mm -hmm. have a nice like melee combat interaction with them that isn't just like oh i'm gonna slash you with my sword and you're dead immediately yeah like, there's still a little bit of like strategy involved in that action yeah. stuff as oh, well also good thing i looked into this actually i literally just got to a green here mm -hmm. it caught my eye you know what this is something i should have definitely noticed i don't know why i didn't notice it at first mm -hmm. no you you are right there i'm looking at the elements here the six elements and you were correct about the the three physical splits yeah. Uh, so it's slash, uh, strike, and pierce. So yeah. they're they're all. So that's basically how it is. Okay. They're, they're doing, doing the persona. The persona mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I'm down with it. I don't mind that's it. Cool. Like, hey, it, make, it makes you unique. I'm glad I noticed that and and all that stuff. But I wonder how that's actually gonna play in the overworld. Actually, when you're fighting an enemy, like, oh yeah, you have a slash attack. The enemy's normally resistant to slash. Are you gonna do less damage to it? I I think depending on your archetype, you will. I actually, th this was seen in the trailers and in the showcase when they switched, like when he switched from Seeker to Brawler, his he didn't use his sword anymore. He was using his fist in the overworld to like fight the enemies and stuff. So I think mm -hmm. there will be some enemies in the overworld who are resistant to some kinds of physical attacks. So that advantage and disadvantage that Hashino was talking about relating to going from fast to squad will be entirely reliant on the archetype you have equipped. Yeah. Yeah. I think that I think that's interesting though. Like like I don't know. There's just so much I want to see more with archetypes. And from what I'm yeah. seeing here one like one's called Seeker, then you have Mage and Brawler. There's a lot of like a lot of pretty much experimentation we're gonna have to do with this game to find out how yeah. each one plays and everything i think that's i think that's just gonna make this game really fun for me like first day it's like you're gonna get all these archetypes and be like all right which which one's gonna be good uh good for each character you know each character has their own stats and everything and i wonder if like their stat growths i guess i'm not too sure if they're gonna do like something similar to fire Emblem, where they have like certain stat growths and everything that go up but i want to see just how that's going to be influenced based on uh the class they just jump into because yeah. i'm pretty sure that like uh for example i wonder how it's going to work for like mage classes right so a mage going straight into like a physical class, right? Are they gonna have like poor strength because of that, or 
Yeah. Or they, it's, maybe, it's gonna bounce, maybe switch it, out, you know? Uh, I think, like, relating to Fire Emblem, Fire Emblem, as you were saying, I think the classes might also affect our stat growth. So, it, mm. it may be not as advantageous for you to move from Mage to Brawler, because mm -hmm. maybe that character won't benefit as much. Or maybe some characters have innate stats. Because I think that's what it was like in Xenoblade. Like, some characters were more um, attuned to certain classes other than versus another character because of just their spread of stats that they had. In the start yeah, of the each game one's, like, game. unique. And it's like, you would want to, like, experiment just to get, like, specific skills and everything like that, so... I'm just really excited for what this archetype system is, and it's going to definitely liven up the gameplay as yeah. what we were talking about and everything. I think the each, archetype each... system is probably the coolest thing we saw this week about this game, honestly. Agreed. Yeah, like, I thought it was just, like, it's, like, your version of Personas and everything, right? So it's, like, each one has, like, their own unique one. I didn't know what it was called before. And once you see the archetypes and see what we can change between them, I'm like, oh, this is this is something yeah. else. This is actually just classes in general. No yeah, plays it's, it's not just Personas, and that's really cool because it seems that everyone, like, you know how, like, Joker or Narukami or Makoto Yuki were the wild cards? Now everyone is the wild card, mm -hmm. so it's going to be cool yeah. to experiment. But yeah. Everyone now has access yeah. to changing how they play and everything. No, no one's going to be the same. The person's going to be physical, and that, then next thing you know, that same person, gets, next thing you know, he's throwing out, they're throwing out magic skills, you know? Yeah. But yeah. Um, anything else you wanted to say about the combat? Because after that, I might slowly start to wrap things up. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. The only other thing, yeah, the, I, I think that's pretty much it for the combat. Because uh, press turns, uh, similar uh, has like a familiarity with SMT and Persona. The class changes how it's gonna affect the gameplay. I think we pretty much covered everything right yeah. now so far from the gameplay. I'm I'm just we more cu I I'm excited and very curious to see how the action to turn based transitions are gonna work and the benefits and the um I guess advantages and disadvantages to that. Because that mm -hmm. was one thing he kinda I won't say he glossed over, but he showed it in action, but he didn't show as much as I thought he would show and I was like, Ah, oh, I wanna see more. Yeah, agreed. So we'll we'll see uh, more of that, I think. Exactly. Now, I, I don't know, if, I think we pretty much covered everything. I mean, I know we talked about the ship a little bit. There's a lot of, like, things you can do there. Like, I saw, like, one of the things that ended with, you know, taking a bath. And yeah, it increases agility or something. that was interesting, it was because funny. it's not like a simple fast travel. You'll be able to do activities as you're traveling. So my question is, like, how many activities are you going to do from point A to point B? And, mm -hmm. like, I, I think it'll be sort of like a Sojiro's Cafe thing, like coffee curry cleaning yeah. the bathroom cooking i saw i saw that the cooking yeah. reading like with the bookshelf there's a lot of things and i think they showed like something akin to social stats in like the first trailer yeah, yeah. but i don't think they went over it here like that can recall mm -hmm. i don't think i saw like oh improve your social stats or something and you then know, maybe you'll be able to earn this follower one of the side quests that you mm -hmm. um that he was about to like go for like um it showed like the benefits or the rewards of the side quest and one of them was mm -hmm. increase your courage so social stats Ooh, are okay. back yeah yeah so like i know they showed that off but like i'm surprised you didn't like really go into like details i was like i was expecting him to be like hey talk about this a little bit because like you know we are forming followers i'm pretty sure there's going to be some followers that are not going to want to like follow us and everything like that like it's like oh it's you know it looks like a well, you know like I, what, what's he going to do i don't care about you but, you know, if you get that certain social set, I was like, okay, you know what? This guy has an ideal. Um, but yeah, he didn't he didn't really go over that. Um, and speaking of followers and all that stuff, how's the people not being able to uh, date any of them, bro? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that was um, that was a story that went around that took the, a lot of people were like, oh my god, no, yeah. uh, no, no romance, no romance in. Yeah, it did affect some people's idea. Like some people actually were not gonna buy the game anymore because of it and everything. Like, they're was, like, "Oh, I can't date." Yeah, um, I, I didn't realize it would out. have that much of an effect on people's choice to buy the game or not. But then I realized mm -hmm. how much of an effect it has on the Persona community. Persona, yeah, <laughs> but, the Persona community. <laughs> the, well, I, I never saw pers like a lot of people call Persona as a dating sim. I never ever saw it as a dating sim. No. And it, like, it, it's only there for like a minute, like exactly. two, one to three minutes, it's, it's, it's and just a couple the rank of little events. Ten of the girls' social link. If you choose to romance them, that's the only date you have. And then, like, if you take them out for like 
Valentine's Day or something, then that's that. So it's exactly it, yeah. It's it's not much of a dating sim. So in this, <laughs> I would be more interested to see if we have a canon romance. I think that would be really that cool. That is very true. Because like canon romance for each character, that'd be really cool. For each character or just the protagonist, like if there's like a like Rex and Pyra situation or like a Almond Celica situation in this game. Almond Celica, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. I, I, yeah, Pyra has had like a canon relationship with like the main characters like forever. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, like. Like, like, last one was like, I guess, Krom and Sumia. Yeah, Krom and Sumia was after. probably the last one. I don't remember if yeah. anything was in Fates. No, nothing in no, Fates. No, because he, nothing no. in Three Houses. Yeah, Krom and Sumia no. was the last one because you needed, like, if you didn't as support anyone before the time skip, you needed, or Lucina still needed a mother. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah she doesn't need a mother, so... Yeah. And even then, you can choose. Even though it's a canon one, you can still choose who you want to be with the yeah. prom and everything. In like my that, first so. playthrough, but, I didn't know you could romance, so it it, it became Samia. But then in my other playthroughs, I chose Olivia. Hey, yeah. you know, fair. Yeah. <laughs> um, but basically, um, I don't know. Maybe maybe they do something like Fire Emblem, where only you you actually choose who you want to be with, like after yeah. like spending time with them throughout your journey. Maybe like I mean, yeah. I wouldn't mind that. You know, you that'd get be the pretty engagement cool. ring, and you can give it to whoever you want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> here, here you go, please. <laughs> but, uh, but but that I mean they could do it. But I'm I'm very really if they don't do something like that, like I don't mind it because this is yeah. different. Like over there, you're forming bonds. Here, you're mainly just getting followers for your you're support. getting followers like, because you're ascending the throne. So you're it's ascending not, the throne, yeah. Like I mean, you're still making connections, you're still forming friendships, but it's it's a but it's, it's a different not, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, it's more like. You know, you're using them for like a social status. Like characters like Ren, you, Makoto. He was just trying to form bonds with these people. Like he knows that he's getting stronger because of it, but he's actually forming genuine bonds with these characters and everything. That like, yeah. to get to know them, help them out with their situation. I'm pretty sure you're gonna help them out, but it's 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 a, in a different aspect. You know, it's not like that. You're there to like become their friends, more like just gain their support. Yeah. If you know what I'm saying. Y you want to mm -hmm. know something that's gonna blow your mind? What's up? So you know how Igor is the one kind of pushing you to do all these social links, right? Yeah. And he's your Velvet Room attendant in all the games, right? Yeah. I think there's an Igor in this game. You think there's an Igor? Oh, okay. So do you, um, did you notice in the second trailer and in this trailer, there is a guy. Right. It's a guy with like pale skin and like long hair and he's got like this hat on i think i know you're talking yeah. about yes i think i remember he, seeing him he always looked like very special and i was like oh i'm gonna keep an eye on this guy even in the first trailer you're talking to him in this like very like weird mystical place so i'm like is he the velvet room attendant and then i didn't notice this but I saw other breakdowns, especially like there's one guy, um, his channel is called Thought Bubble. He mentioned this and he pointed mm -hmm. this out. The, in the showcase, you will see like the guy like running around the town doing whatever. And you'll see like this ghost kind of specter kind of figure. And there's a book on top of his head. And he's just like mm -hmm. sitting down there. And I was like, oh, who's that really? ghost? And then as you look closer, it's that same guy. So I feel like if you really? go up and talk to that guy who's like a ghost, he will take you into that like mystical world where he will be in his full form with his like full appearance. You'll be able to see him. He's not a ghost. And like he'll be your that they Velvet attendant okay. where he'll be able to like help you mix and match your archetypes, level mm -hmm. up your archetypes. Yeah, like, and even if we're using Igor as the example, but this can also apply to like how it is in SMT3 where you have a, uh, you world know, dude in the Cathedral of Shadows. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, in, yeah, speaking of World of Shadows, you have um, Sophia. Sophia. And How everything, was it you know, in like SMT3? Because I never played 3 and 4. I forgot his name, but uh, I just remember, like, when every time I went in there, I would just hear, Welcome to the Cathedral of Shadows, yeah. where demons gather. <laughs> yeah. But I forgot his name, but each one had, like, you know, SMT has, like, their own group of people. It's always different. But SMT5 is uh, Sophia and everything. Yeah. But, yeah, like, I'm glad you mentioned Igor, because Igor is, I guess, the most notable one. Yeah. Um, but th that would be interesting because, like, if there is like an Igor archetype, like, are we gonna like fuse stuff? Like, uh, I don't. I'm I'm very curious. Yeah. Like, maybe materials because, like, yeah. so, so far we're just playing monsters. We can't just recruit the monsters and everything, you know. 
Oh, I will say humans. there are um, <laughs> other. Um, I have to go back to the other trailers, but there are other trailers where there are menus, it, which we have not seen in like this showcase in this recent trailer, which could be from that yeah. like velvet room place, which. I'm guessing it's called the Academia because when you finish that Bond um, episode with uh, Katarina, I think she, her name is, and you get mm -hmm. the brawler, it says you can now study the brawler in Academia. Okay. So I think Academia is what the Velvet Room is going to be called. And you can mm -hmm. go there, study the archetype some more, level it up in some way, depending on how many Bonds you've gotten. And that guy will be there to help you out. He he sort of gives me cool. Alvis vibes. He just he looks like Alvis <laughs> from Xenoblade. He's just, uh, he's, tr he's trying to he's trying to he's trying to guide the protagonist and everything. I, I like, all right, do this, will... do that. That'll be funny. I think um, my also little bit of a theory relating to the story is in the beginning when you're naming your kind of um, narrator before you even name the protagonist, mm -hmm. the person talking to you is called the scheming man. So I think that Velvet Room yeah, Academia him. guy is the scheming man. The scheming man, he knows about the past world, and it turns he, out we're actually living in the past world. He, he knows uh, about both worlds, I think. He knows about the reality and the fantasy world. That'd be so cool. I'll be, I'll be so excited if they actually yeah. do something like Dragon Guard. This yeah. medieval thing where you, you'll see some cities destroyed, and you're like, what is going on here? The next thing you know, the cannon went to the near ending. It's just this yeah. giant <laughs> point from the sky and modern at the time modern day tokyo yep. but uh i can totally yeah, see them doing something like that uh, or go like all, even like go a, all yoko taro <laughs> yeah yoko taro tetsuya takahashi kind of thing like i'm pretty sure that something's gonna happen at the end of a uh, metaphor at least that's what i'm hoping and theorizing right now yeah. like, we, like one of the final areas is just a modern day like city it's just yeah. yo i'm in new york times square new york in yeah. <laughs> it probably tokyo but i i still funny. like we're, we have a lot of these theories I think a lot of them are going to happen, but I also hope there's a lot of surprises in there as well. Like, things that we mm -hmm. just don't expect happening, and I want them to kind of blow us away. And I think they will, so I'm very excited. Yeah. But before, Agreed, we, yeah. before we close out, because we've been going for a while, but it's it's been a really good discussion, but... I know, right? It, yeah. it goes to show just how much we have yeah. to talk about for Metaphor, yeah. even though we only have, like... But then again, they drop, like, 25, like a 25-minute video yeah. just talking about it, so we have a lot yeah a lot of material to cover but um uh any final like things you want to uh like shout out or mention about it yo atlas yo can you guys like hit me up so i can get a game so i can play it early bro you review know what i'm saying copy. like hook us up bro yo, you, not even a review copy fly both of us out like let's go and try the game out for, <laughs> for yeah, us like, you know how we'll ha they're doing demos at like uh i, I don't remember where they said but they're doing some demos in Japan, so like, hopefully, like, I, I I don't know if I'll be able to go to Summer Games Fest or anything. But like, if anyone's going to mm -hmm. Summer Games Fest and they have demos there, like, that would be cool. Yeah, I think it's I think it's closed to the public as well. I think it's just only invitees and everything. Hey, yeah. invite me, uh, Jeff Ke Jeff Keeley, hit me up, uh, um, uh, JV Jeff Mania, uh, JV Maniac on Twitter. Uh, yeah. Oh, we got Nish. Yeah, Nishquick on uh, Twitter and everything. Hook us up, bro. Like, come on, get us a flight over there. <laughs> that'll be that'll be awesome. Yeah. Any like, I'm I'm curious to see what the demos are gonna be for this game because one of my friends was very lucky and fortunate to play Persona 3 Reload early at Gamescom last year, and he made like a whole mm -hmm. video on it. And I'm like, I I wonder where Metaphor is going to be. <laughs> I gotta search for, <laughs> gotta search I for it. it. So he, so he got invited and everything. That's that's cool. No, that's cool. Yeah, well, Gamescom is open to the public. Oh, so he, got, he, he, he went for, right he went with a couple of friends and he stood in line for two hours to play Persona Three, and he Ooh. was he he got it and he was able to play both of the demos, so, and that was nice and very fortunate that he got to do that's that. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, no, I mean it's cool and everything. That yeah, I wonder, no, like they are gonna eventually do demos here. Like, there's no doubt about. It. I mean, E3 is kind of gone, so like I think at most like the most public we'd have is like a PAX. Like Pax East, Pax West, Pax East, yeah. in America. Pax and, is coming in America. pretty soon. I'm not <laughs> sure if Metaphor is going to be there, but I think <laughs> the next thing will probably be like 
summer game fest or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, like or, behind closed, like or, only or, for the invitees. Already happened? Did it not already happen? I think it already happened. No, ga summer game fest. No, it's uh, that's no in June. packs. I was saying packs. I think oh, packs already. Oh, packs happened. east. Yeah, but they have like a bunch of packs and everything. Packs west. For packs example. west is like later in September, I think. Or sorry, yeah, okay. September. I think it's west. Yeah. I know Anime Expo. They'll probably be there. Atlas likes to do stuff. Like that's where they they, they had the, the mm -hmm. cast of P3R there, so they will probably do something in Anime Expo. Yeah. There's a lot of places that they're gonna have. Uh, gonna have for the metaphor demo and everything but uh i, I definitely want to hear what people are going to say when they get their hands on the game uh not about it no doubt about it like that's through her one of the biggest like smt persona users like johnny awesome is definitely gonna like get his hands on oh, the game before yeah. any single one of us he so did you see his reaction to the xbox reveal uh oh, wait God. for the which one did, like, for no, metaphor or, when or? when when metaphor got like officially revealed at the xbox show yeah he he, he wasn't gonna he was flipping I, off he, i i don't think he was going to stream it but because there was leaks that persona 3 reload was going to be revealed at the xbox show he streamed it and the biggest surprise to everyone was that re fantasy was there as well and his reaction really, yeah. to that is insane he like screams and he goes insane and he cries yeah, like, and he's like oh my god it's a real i can't believe it's, it's real. real it's actually a real game like no yeah. like I, I was i was freaking out too god i mean i knew only knew about the leak so like seeing metaphor there i was like there's no way yeah. like that that was huge for me and everything but yeah. uh I, like i i really really need more of this game bro like <laughs> i cannot wait i want to try it out uh it's definitely not inviting me <laughs> but uh, it's so, my most I'll, hyped I'll, game right now though I, it definitely is my most anticipated and most hyped game. Yeah, yeah I, I feel like it's going to be my uh, gonna be my favorite uh, game of the year. Like, it's going to be my game of the year and all that stuff for... Yeah, and for all me stuff, right now, like, it's, it's going to be competing with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth because I really enjoyed that game. So I have, that's to, fair. I have to see how this yeah. compares to Rebirth for me. Yeah, let's see. Hey, let's see if it ends up being a part of a part of the nominees for game of the year. So far, from what I've seen, I think FF7 Rebirth is going to be part of it. Metaphor maybe. I think we are maybe. I think Metaphor has a chance. I don't know about Persona 3 Reload. I think mm -hmm. Metaphor has a chance, and uh, Rebirth has a chance. I hope um I hope Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth gets nominated because that'll be that'll be a good one too. Yeah, that's a that's a very very good game from what I've heard, but. I okay. in terms of hype, I I I hope it like gets on that level. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the Prince of Persia game is gonna be on it. Mm -hmm. Uh, but cool. I do hope that at least Metaphor gets on it. Like, I mean, I would love P3R to get in it because as of right now, I mean, we're still at the beginning of this year. I don't think anything like crazy has come out, right? I like, think Hell Divers will be on even... the list. Oh, the, yeah, that's probably true. You're right. Hell Divers is probably gonna be there. But so long as metaphor gets there, that's all that matters. Because like so far from what I'm seeing, it looks great, and I hope it does take the world by storm, kind of like. E5 just like brought everyone to like know more about Atlas and know more about Persona. So I do hope that Metaphor captures like that audience and everything. Yeah. Then cap captures the new audience, captures the old audience, and it grows into a fan base. Like, yeah, I love this. Uh, this is great. I don't know if they're gonna make a Metaphor 2, right? But I would love to see another game. Or, or if they do Metaphor 2, it doesn't have to be a sequel. It could just be like, you know, Metaphor 2, but you don't have to play the first game, you know? It'll be called uh, Onomatopoeia. <laughs> It'll be called or hyperbole. Hyperbole, simile. The game. Yeah. <laughs> so, like they just, they just start naming it random, stuff, random stuff related to the uh, English and everything. Yeah. That'll be funny. But yeah. other than that, I think that's I think that's pretty much all I can yeah. say as of right now. Uh, I do hope that it becomes game of the year. I hope the game is a banger. Uh, and I can't wait to know more about the game. Yeah, anyway. same. I'm very excited and I'm very like optimistic about this game so we'll see but yeah th thanks so much yeah. septic for joining in on this discussion um septic's channel will be linked in the description below give him a follow give him a follow on twitter and subscribe <laughs> to his channel on youtube you want to um <laughs> hype up any new projects you got in the works or anything i'm still trying to get this video i, I don't think i've said it at all like and i don't, I don't even remember i made an update about it but uh, i am working on something uh, it's it's the most simplest thing I can get done. I'm literally right at the end. It's just mainly due to work and me being tired. I haven't really been working on it. Um, but literally in my rut, to basically give you the, the rundown, like in my rut, I basically um, thought of more like video ideas and everything like that. So like I have like a bunch of like video ideas. I just got to pretty much yeah. get them done and everything. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to make a metaphor video. I did record my reaction, but uh, um, but other than that, like I, I don't know if I have like a metaphor video plan except for maybe like my thoughts on like the game and everything like that when it comes out 
but that that's pretty much gonna be it like uh that i can think of but yeah i don't want to kind of like ease anything but i might make something I'll, I'll you know i will tease something just for just yeah. for just for here my next video is related to um a certain console pretty much uh and all that stuff that people are like looking have like all eyes on and they're like what's next uh, <laughs> what's I next from you what what's that is yeah, yeah, a certain console but, that was yeah. probably supposed to release this year, but may not release this year. Yeah, may may not. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just Steam Deck too. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but also, the case, so, shout yeah. out to Septic for predicting that Persona 3 Reload was gonna get answered DLC, and many of us didn't believe it. We're like, nah, dude, it's not gonna happen. And I was hoping we're, we're getting it. It's real. It's and, real, and yeah. The expansion. Said, we're gonna get answer, but no FMC, and that's exactly what I did say that. Like I, I felt like as much as people love uh, FMC, and I, you know what, I don't, uh, I do not blame. Like right, like I wouldn't, I would love to see FMC there too. I just knew that it's just a whole different beast compared to yeah. support and the There's answer. A the answer is simple. There's additional content that they would have to add to it. Voice acting, uh, cutscenes, um, music, like uh, music, music, new music tracks, right? Um, it's it's it, it comes down to just being really expensive because then different scenes have to be added in new dialogue uh, as well new social new dialogue, links the, new animations think about it, they, have, they would have to remake uh yasugami high from scratch because there's a yeah. whole like trip that femsi goes to where she goes to yasugami oh. high so it's oh, like yeah. yeah that's right they have a little cameo of young uh yukiko where she's applying yeah. for oh, yasugami shit, you're right that's yeah, so it's like, they exclusive to, yeah oh god exactly so it's like they have to remodel like uh yasugami they're not just gonna have like a png in the back there's like yeah look at that they, they have to remodel that whole thing it's like Makes a sense. whole it's a whole different beast exactly uh, to do yeah. and everything so and and they I, want I to move blame. on to future projects persona 6 exactly metaphor 2 so, you know, <laughs> but it hurt me to say that but i i was literally going on saying femc is not gonna happen but like the answer i i felt like there's no doubt about it it was gonna happen it's so important to the like yeah. persona 3 and the lore as a whole like the answer is and gonna happen this I'm is their chance this. to fix it and make it better exactly so it is happening a little bit too expensive we're not gonna talk about that but uh yeah it i, I just said it was gonna happen uh but yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah yeah definitely check out septic septic's channel down below in the description thank you for joining once again and let us know in the comments below what you think of metaphor of this whole like showcase we talked a lot about it and yeah let, let us know your thoughts in the comments below this is nishquick and septic signing off have a great day go play some great games today like any atlas game that is available on all mm -hmm. major modern consoles we'll see you guys in the next one later peace right.